What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video. A highly requested video, mind you. And that is, what are my franchise settings? What are my rebuild settings? And gameplay sliders, I haven't exactly figured out yet. But for you guys watching this video, you're watching it probably for the rebuild sliders. So it's a lot of simulation stuff. So we're going to go through starting a franchise. What I do, what you guys might want to do. You might want to tweak some things to your own individual liking. But this is what I do pretty much every single time. So we're going to use our custom roster. You could use real life. But I don't like to do that because if you're using real life and you start from the preseason, the roster is going to be so drastically different from when you're in week 10, maybe starting a rebuild. So let's say a guy like Kareem Hunt last year started out pretty low overall. And then by week 10, he's going off all the time. So you got to boost his overall. So he's like an 87 overall, maybe 86. He's boosted all the way up to something in that range. Hypothetical, of course, even though this did happen last year, something similar at least. And um, you start your rebuild. You're in the preseason. And he's still at like a 78. It's just not in people, you know, watching the video up at that point in week 10. They're like, what's going on? Why isn't Kareem Hunt starting? It's because he sucks in the game. That's why. Well, you know, whatever. So we're going to go ahead and choose the Jaguars here. And usually I will do a custom coach for the fantasy style rebuilds where I'm trade focused. I always choose the trade influence package for the realistic style rebuilds. It's more focused on drafting and progressing players. So I always do the coach XP package. Now I could do expert scout because I know I'm going to buy coach XP anyway, but I just usually always choose coach XP. It's more player progression focused. So that's what I'll do for the sake of this video. I am not going to be doing that. And I will always start from the preseason because even though it's just four weeks of preseason action, I like the extra XP that I'm able to get from that simulation. It takes no time. I start earlier, get a little bit more XP that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So I'm all about it. As far as commissioner settings go, the difficulty does not matter. I've received comments or received comments over the last few years in my rebuilds and franchise and all that. Oh, this is a rookie boat. These trades are too easy. Um, many of you will know that's just stupid thinking just by idiots mainly. And I hate to, if you're one of those guys, now you know, if, because I think most idiots are totally unaware that they're stupid. Um, but the trade logic over the past few years has not changed. It hasn't. And the difficulty, surprise, surprise, does not impact that. You can make the same exact trade on rookie as you can on all Madden. Game speed doesn't matter if you're not playing the games. Game style. Again, doesn't matter if you're not playing the games. None of this really matters. Coach firing, CPU only. Um, they have this as a new default setting, so you can't get fired if Madden screws you over and your team shifts the bed. Salary cap, of course, always on. Relocation settings, I usually have to normal because I don't mess around with it because teams relocate a lot less this year in my experience. You can disable that because if you're in the draft in year four and you're like, oh man, the uh, San Antonio Sheriffs are on the clock or the London Monarchs or something dumb. I don't really want to see that. I want to see the actual team because it's more realistic that way. Just my personal preference. Injury always off. Pre-existing injury off. The reason I do this, and of course when I do my actual franchises, and of course check out Giants Franchise on the channel. You guys have been loving it so far. I appreciate the support a ton. Like and subscribe if you're new on this video, by the way. It, it defeats the entire purpose when you're doing simulation because injuries happen so often in simulation, and especially... When you have guys on your team, it's like the CPU takes your top five overall guys. It's like, you get a broken collarbone and you get a broken collarbone and you get a broken collarbone. Just hit my mic. But I mean, they're out for nine weeks and it's just, why? It, it defeats the entire purpose of the rebuild. It's to put the best players on the team and then have no other variables besides Madden Sim bullshit stand in the way. I don't want players getting injured. I don't want my starting QB getting out and then an entire year is over. And then it takes me six years to do a rebuild because my starting quarterback gets injured every year. Practice squad ske uh, stealing doesn't really matter. Player progression frequency, I usually have on weekly. Sometimes I do end of the season. I think end of the season plays a little bit better, honestly. But when I'm doing, um, when I'm doing auto progress players, wherever that is, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll talk about it in a minute. But end of the season or weekly, it doesn't really matter here. It depends on what you're looking for. I think. I think end of the season is better if you want to win games because your team stays the same. You can auto upgrade their, or you can upgrade the manually, I should say. And then the other teams around the league won't get better until after the season, which could be good. 
So you could try that. Quarter length, doesn't matter, of course. Season experience, I always customize this. Weekly training auto. I don't want to go in every week when I'm doing a rebuild, I'm doing a lot of simulating and auto, or excuse me, and manually handle putting all these players through their weekly training to gain a little extra XP. Let the CPU take care of it. Trades and free agency, obviously manual. Off-season free agent bidding, manual. Injury management, irrelevant. Preseason cut days, manual. I don't, it usually automates anyway because I don't care. It's not really cutting anyone of value anyway. Contract negotiations, of course, manual. Scout college players. I have that manual at the off-season. I'll pretty much always start with auto because I'm doing a lot of simulating. I'm not going to go week by week for the sake of time and scout players every week. I'll do auto through the season, and then I'll take it over in the offseason. I'll change it to manual, and I'll scout in the offseason. You still get a ton of points. You can still find players you want. The CPU does an okay job of scouting the positions that you need. League advancement, you're going to handle that by yourself. Tutorial pop-ups off. I don't need to know how to scout every single time I go into the league. I know how to scout. It's been the same for years now. I know exactly how to do it. It's very easy. Tutorials on my channel, by the way, if you're having a little bit of trouble knowing what to look for, I mean the actual process of clicking A or XXX, whatever, to find out what they're going to be good at. Auto progress players, it depends. I would usually have this off. Last year I had it off. I liked it off a lot. This year, the only way to upgrade everybody at once is when you're coming out of a game, it'll pop up with the option. Or, or, you can have it on and it'll do it, you know, automatically week by week. And my favorite, it takes longer because I don't like to pop in and out of the settings when I'm doing a video. You can have this to off and then upgrade the players that you want and then turn it on and simulate a week. That's always an option. Fill roster on. You guys are not going to join this. There's no reason to, honestly. Um, but that's the password. It's, uh, you try to pronounce that. I'm certainly not going to. But that's all the setup that I do to create this. League settings, fine. And then we're going to get into the XP sliders and coach settings and things like that. So gameplay sliders are clearly irrelevant. Team settings, the only thing that you're going to find in here are game options, things that aren't really relevant to the actual rebuild process, and then visual things, so brightness, uh, contrast, things like that. And I saw the headline... That a Browns 0 16 to the playoffs? A video I made on my channel. So check that one out too. A lot of self promotion for me going on here in my own channel. Hashtag sellout. But um, we're going to check out the XP sliders first. A lot of questions about these, and they're not fine tuned. I mess around with it a little bit, but this is pretty much what I found to work the best. So quarterbacks, I found that 170 to 180 works pretty well. They don't tend to get a ton of XP usually somehow because simulation's weird this year with QBs. So I like to have that pretty high at 180. And then halfbacks, I'll stick somewhere around 170. I used my XP sliders higher last year than I do this year. I think it upgrades differently. Tight ends tend to upgrade at a pretty good rate. I would go 165, 170. We'll try 165 here. And then wide receivers, they upgrade at a pretty good rate as well. I like 170 for them. Fullbacks never get any XP. So to get them a little bit more XP, I jacked that up to 300. It, they don't they don't upgrade anyway, so I they might as well upgrade a little bit more than nothing. Tackles, offensive line generally does not upgrade too fast. I think 180 is pretty good for offensive linemen in general. Tackles, guard, center, uh, that's what we're looking for. So defensive ends, it's tough. Sometimes they'll go off, sometimes they won't. I think 180 is generally a pretty good baseline for defensive ends and then defensive tackles i think 180 is probably pretty good as well middle linebackers i think 170 is fine they tend to get a lot of xp at some some instances and then outside linebackers i'd like 170 as well cornerbacks a little bit wishy-washy i think 170 plays really well 175 plays super solid as well and we're gonna do the exact same for free and strong safeties also so that's pretty much what i use Kickers and punters, I always jack up to 300 because, again, this is a position that does not upgrade at all, pretty much. What you see year one is what you're going to see year five for the most part. And this does change if they make the Pro Bowl or things like that, but that's a 1 in 32 chance. 1 in 64 for both of them to make it. So it is a little bit more rare. This is pretty much what I'm rocking with. I like it. It plays pretty well. It's a decent boost. And again, this is impacted 
are impactful to every single team in your league. This is not just for your team. Every single team will get these upgraded XP sliders. I just think that players develop a little bit better under those specific XP sliders. As far as coach XP goes, when I'm doing, uh, doing the uh, fantasy style rebuilds, it always starts out with trade package or trade negotiator. So I will always start with player weekly goal XP. Every single time I will start with that. And then I usually won't do quarterback, running back, or wide receiver, or tight end because it's too expensive. But I'll focus on D-line, linebacker, defensive back, and then offensive line. Usually in a round that order. I'll always start with the defense because it's cheaper. And then I'll go offensive line. And then if I do have XP, I'll go quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, whatever needs to work. Usually it is either quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight ends are usually fine. Player retention, I never buy anything in here. It's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Maybe retirement influences, but at that point, the players probably aren't a super high overall anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much to me. And then player acquisition, maybe you do expert scouting if you have everything, but usually it doesn't get to that point for me. You have enough scouting points as it is. And then master trade negotiator, I start with. But those are all my settings, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're new or not subscribed already. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.